The Sati Buo Sante Architects was founded in Milan in 2017 by Anton Buon Sante and Federico Casati, and they tackle architecture and design widely from domestic to urban dimensions. In their practice, the studio realizes architecture as a spatial experience and keep testing limits through implementation while also maintaining control in the process. The office works with the ever-changing environment and uses architecture as a springboard for a richer and more inclusive societal vision as a whole. And we are joined today by Antonio and Federico to discuss domestic landscape inside dynamic urban environments. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you to you for inviting us. So I'm very happy to be here. I'm excited. Will you first tell us about uh, your background and the studio? Well, um, as a background, we both studied at the university here in Milan for the first uh, three years. Um, and I think that the, that the Milanese uh, school, academic school, is, was, was very important for us in the first period of uh, our formation. Um, even if then we moved, uh, I moved to Denmark and Antonio was moving to another university, still Politecnico di Milano, but uh, another kind of approach. Uh, so we kind of kept the Italian uh, North uh, academic point of view in a, in a certain sense, uh, which is very uh, carefully designed around the context. So there is a big attention to the context, to the historical process, to the historical reading of the space. And uh, through this tool, then you, you can use it as a tool for designing and, and creating your, your design. So that was probably one of the biggest thing we have in common. Um, I don't know, Antonio, if, uh, yeah, we can, um, <clears throat> we can add that, uh, during the university, we, we, we founded a sort of a collective group was uh, Fosbera is actually Fosbera Architecture, which are the actually creator of the, the Italian pavilion at Ex Architectural Biennale. And uh, after uh, five or four years in, in this uh, group, we decided to, to, to split, to, 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 to get out uh, from uh, this experience in order to, to, to open our uh, studio, our let's say Casati Bonsante in 2017, mm. which was, uh, uh, let's say, which was, uh, which try to, to keep the profession as, a, uh, as a effect based on the construction, based on the, the physical, the physical matter of architecture. Mm. So uh, keeping always the research and the, a sort of uh, yeah special approach, uh, but the, uh, showing it through the construction site, uh, showing it through the the, the the buildings or department we, we, we the project we, we realized. Yeah, that's amazing, and I think uh, that also explains your design approach. I assume. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, the design approach is, uh, let's say, close to the special factor of architecture. So we always try to to think in, term, in terms of a speciality, like uh, in the city, like in, in an urban fabric. So I think the link between uh, urban landscape and the domestic landscape is uh, through essentially through the, the space and how you perceive the space and how you move into the space. So for, uh, I mean, we have to, to say that the majority of the project we, we, we do actually are uh, interiors or anyway, domestic uh, project, uh, domesticity project. Uh, so the, 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 the approach we, we keep is always uh, special, especially. So how the people, how the, the owner of the house or the visitors can move and experience architecture in the same way an, an architect can think about, for example, a museum or a urban, uh, urban, uh, uh, fact, 
which is designed in order to experience people through the, 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 the body to the space. So this is yeah. the, 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 the main approach, I think. And then we add layers of, of course, of materials, of atmosphere, of uh, we add other layers on the top in order to, to be cool, in order to be contemporary, in order to be also beautiful to see and to, to experience. But the main fact that the, the primarily the essence of our design approach is the, spa the space. Mm -hmm. So this is the reason why our products are always also different from one from each other. One is red, one is uh, white, one is uh, wood, one is metal. I mean, we don't really have a sort of uh, signature, atmosphere signature. We are quite free. Uh, yeah. And uh, if I can add, it's even more, we don't attach to a kind of, uh, to a unique style. Also because we, as we are saying in the abstract, uh, we always try to merge together our vision with the client's vision that we see as something that is very, uh, it's really enriching the project. It's not uh, like uh, taking it down. So uh, we are always willing uh, to to find a, a common field between us and the client, which for now it's always kind of a private client. So we also like to deal with this kind of uh, matter, which is very close to architecture, but it's not. That is the attachment that someone has for a space. So the the feelings that the space creates into the clients, the, all the fears, dreams that the client has and that wants to, in, in some way, they always want to put it into a, into the space, especially when it's a domestic space or when it's a flat or a renovation of a small house. Uh, so the other, uh, let's say the other parallel uh, field of our approach is probably the human matter that then that is going to live into those spaces. And another thing that I think uh, could be interesting is that as a studio, we are also very referential in, in the sense that we always start with a lot of references. So for us, like, um, yeah, <clears throat> we don't have a kind of unique style also because we tend to absorb a lot of references from outside that comes from the field of architecture, art, uh, contemporary art and so on. Um, and so we are also, I think that we could say also that there is a kind of um, compromise between all those tensions. The, the first one that Antonio was saying, the spatial tension, the attention to the construction side, then there is the client input, and then there is also the background of all the references that we are sharing together, me and Antonio and our collaborators and so on. Mm. That's sweet. And so since we're talking about domestic and urban landscapes, um, I'm wondering in that same context, what have been the common goals of domestic spaces and what have been the challenges in realizing a successful one? Um, well, uh, recently we, we had like a, a workshop, like one week ago, uh, in the in a university in Rome, and that was uh, very interesting because we started to experiment about this topic. So the relationship between urban and domestic uh, landscape and how they can connect to each other and how they talk to each other. And um, the topic of the workshop that I think is at the moment what resemble our point of view, the, our actual point of view on this relationship was the topic was about to, how to create a flexible and generic domestic space that is capable to adapt to a lot of different um, a lot of different users with no distinction of age or distinction of uh, um, numbers of people in terms of families or couples or singles and so on so to create a um, a flexible and generic space for us was the very main point of this because we think that a kind of uh, flexible and generic space is more 
uh, also sustainable in the point of view because it also adapts easily to all the changes in in society so uh, and then they were kind of forced the students to um, to also cooperate on the design of the outside so it was like um, in, uh, in it was a very um, strict approach to to this topic but the, the the meaning was that once you design a house you cannot forget about the the outside and the common space so once you design the private space in uh, some way you are creating a citizen that lives in this space and then uh, start living in the public space in the common space so we think the house is a kind of tool that you can use in order to be a better citizen and construct the city as well. And then how have you balanced the different skills of your work and what are the overlaps? I mean, we started uh, uh, with the uh, interiors also because, uh, so let's say the small scale, uh, also because there was not so many opportunities in, in, in Italy because we are so many architects and so few clients. And so, I mean, it was also a matter of um, of uh, uh, I would say opportunities. No, it was a lot, there, there is, and there was maybe more at the, at the beginning a lack of opportunities for our generation. Also, because the the previous generation was becoming, let's say, more and more important, but quite quite uh, late lately. So, I mean the. 45, 55 years old architect generation was starting to become someone. So also there was, I think, in a sort of way, uh, let's say, focusing the attention on, on them. So we started on interiors because there was no other opportunities. And we we take the interiors as uh, uh, the same, we, we, let's say we, we enlarge the scale of the interiors as it was an, an urban artifact. So uh, as it was a building, for example, because we our formation was uh, architects, was not the interiors, was not the decorative uh, decorator. So for example, uh, the, 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 a library, a, a bookshelf, sorry, uh, was for us the occasion to, to design a building, for example, no? So there was a sort of, uh, uh, mixing uh, the, the scales in order to get uh, an urban element or in order to to arrive to a, a, a design was uh, without a scale a real fixed scale so this is also the reason why for us corridors are like a porch where you have column uh, the column are for example a bookshelf or a closet or uh, this kind of stuff uh a facade a library uh no a library sorry always a bookshelf can be a facade of the room so the room has a sort of uh, inside and outside so you have to deal with the room as it you are in a public space or in a private space and this is uh, i think the way we mix scales in order to to arrive uh, to a domestic space that keeps maintain the same qualities of a good city. So in the in the domestic space, you you should have the occasion to invite people. So you, there are common spaces, but then you have private spaces, and the, the way we define this uh, this sort of let's say uh, ambience are not within the rooms but are within how you move and you perceive. So this is the reason why we, we have facade elements, pillars, or this kind of stuff, even if we are in a, a little apartment, for example. It is always it is not always possible. It depends, of course, on the budget, on, on the space, or also of the house. But even for a small apartment, for two rooms apartment, we try, let's say, to, 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 to keep this... Uh, at least a few of these ideas. Mm, yeah, I agree. And especially if you're designing a home, you're designing for a specific person, you're more, you're, you're connect more to your client. So, and then that client has, a, has their own life, right? So you kind of 
you kind of expand your scope to beyond the living space what he or she does outside of the home um i think it's all related in that regard um will you then share with us one or two of your projects that has uh, successfully resembled your approach so i start with uh, dr house and then antonio will explain the other one which are really resembling our approach um doctor house was a kind of was a house for a, a doctor as uh, the name goes um but the, it was the old house of his mother so it was very old it was the probably the oldest client we have ever had so it was very kind of uh also a different relationship between us and the client because he was a, a doctor a, a pro, a, like a chief of a department of a of an hospital here in Milan. So it was a kind of, there was a big distance between us and him, also culturally and socially, because we were coming from different side of the, of the same thing. And uh, he wanted to move into the ground of his uh, mother's house. So it was a kind of his house when he was a child, he grew up in this building and so on. So at the very beginning we entered the house there was like a lot of furnitures there still there from the mothers paintings of the family books and all those kind of things that they were they were really like um important to him and he wanted to preserve all those feelings but also changing the entire space of the house so the, the request was to keep all those objects as elements of a museum of a a kind of a storytelling of the family, but also he wanted to change a lot the space. Uh, and the thing we we've, we've done was to create a huge uh, bookshelves uh, that creates a kind of room. So it closed three sides of the room um, and uh, shows to the visitors all the objects of the old family as in, as if in a museum. So we designed the the small cave for a uh, for a cross with Jesus on it, uh, we designed the space for the for the whole furniture in a dark wood uh, of the grandmothers and so on. And so this kind of room was a, for us like this bookshelves was for us uh, a, a kind of building facing the square, the public square, because the living room for us was like the space in which the doctor. Uh, invite people for dinner or have also lectures because he's a professor in the university and it was very important also to design a, a background of for his conferences and so on so also the color of the of the the design of the bookshelf is like a building so it's uh, with its rhythm and with the, like a basement and then uh, uh, another uh, part on the top that closed the design of it and also the color was uh, this uh, very strong purple, which is a kind of a <clears throat> cardinal, like church purple color. Uh, but it's also a, the color that matches better the different um, essence of the wood, uh, of the different uh, small objects that are showcased. And so probably this was one of the the first projects we have in which we were able to put all those all those thoughts that we are talking about. Um, uh, so the second project can can be uh, Madonna Bellini House, which is a couple of young uh, uh, wife and uh, how to say uh, a, a young a young couple, and they just also they they move into the family house. So. Also here, there is a, a strong relation with the, with the house, the space, and the emotion. The, the space uh, was able to 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 unlock in, in the owner. No, so if, also here, even if they they are young, the 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 the, the, the they were uh, the husband was was uh, born in, into this house. So um, we renovated the house completely also here. So it was a, a big uh, demolition party before the project started. 
and uh, we we design also here the space as uh, it as it is a sort of uh, a urban space with a, a certain part dedicated to the public and to the common uh, uh, to the hospitality of the others so the, the the owner can show can there is a, a sort of show off of the house so when you are a visitor you are a, a welcome you, you you can enter and experience the space in a sort of choreographic way so it is designed how you have to experience the the the, the common part and then the private parts are almost hidden are are quite hidden into the behind the wall so you cannot you can never you cannot understand that the house is bigger than the house is uh, going on uh, be behind a wall and there there is all the the private part of the of the owners so the the bedroom the master bedroom uh, the kids uh, the kids bedrooms uh, the toilet all, all the private spaces are hidden behind a wall and between the private spaces and the common spaces there is a, a space in between which is a, a sort of portico uh, like in a building it is it is a sort of uh, um how to say step hold uh, it is a sort of <clears throat> we yeah between uh, the, the the inside and the outside mm -hmm. so these two projects for example are um are quite are based on also on furnitures for us furnitures are always an important element which are not uh, uh, which define the space so there is not the space and then the furnitures so we don't have a decorative approach even if it is good eh? we are not against this but it's only a matter of uh, formation and how we we design uh, the furnitures uh, um, have the same uh, intention of walls for us so the the furnitures uh, describe define the space uh, as we want uh, to as we want to design it yeah they all sound so personal and tailored which is yeah. nice <laughs> so lastly in your opinion what is the best way to design urban domesticity that is able to adapt with dynamic future although you kind of did say it's a flexible space but um how how do you translate it into real designs? Um, well, I think we are like now um, kind of stuck to approach the topic of flexibility. Uh, and we had uh, two competitions about this. They are like spread into the different years because one was in 20. Uh, 21, I think, and the, the other one is was this year. But anyway, um, we started there to understand how to approach to a very flexible space and to a very generic space um, without being, without uh, like achieving those easy solutions of movable parts or curtains or so on. So we, we are trying to start to to research about the, the very flexible space. So how a, a flexible space works and how it's possible to achieve it with fixed walls, with architecture, so not with the uh, furniture elements and so on. Uh, and I think this thing is uh, really now one of the things that we are trying to do through the projects and mostly, let's say, not competitions, but uh, uh, we are also trying to do it in on a bigger scale. So now we are also working on another project on the seaside in which uh, also the flexibility is very important because it's a public space made up of big rooms uh, in which all the services are uh, like pushed apart in order to leave a huge, huge rooms, uh, very flexible and very generic. And that's something that we are now interested in. Um, and probably we are also kind of leaving the the domestic scale in a way because we are also now trying to experiment 
on new constructions, on uh, bigger projects. Uh, uh, of course, we are gr growing up, so um, also the projects are growing with us and we are now also approaching to different scales that are not anymore only domestic space. Uh, and that take a lot also like uh, different topics that we didn't expect. So the first one was this of a, of a generic space, of a flexible space. And the other one was also, it is also how to, um, how to live in contexts that are not the city, because we were grown up in the city. We studied there here in Milan. So we have always tried tend to think about architecture as something that is uh, urban. So it's an urban fact. But uh, now we are also working in south of Italy and south of France, where uh, urbanity and cities are not so big as Milan and the north of Italy, which is a kind of huge uh, uh, agglomerate of, uh, of buildings. And so there will be other topics that we are not even aware of that will be like uh, uh, enlightened by projects on the countryside, I think. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I think despite the scale, you know, uh, although we're designing for our personal space, I think um, opening up enough to the urban landscape or the context around it, it will always make it flexible enough and with that the design and the architecture that we make will will grow with time and with the changes that uh, the outside world is going through so i think that's why and how we can keep making relevant designs and architecture so thank you for the reminder for that and thank you so much for sharing again thank you thank you thank you